Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as Four Kids at One Four Seven, and it's time to kit up my next comparison diamond painting. So I'm doing this picture about five times that Megan's done one. So this is my number three, and I'm on to the thirty by forty size. So I need to kit this up, but I also need to kit down the bigger size, which I think was 40 by 50. So I need to kit that down and I need to kit this up. Now this one only has 27 colors. So I am gonna move to a smaller case that only has 30 bottles. Um, this could make it easier than last time. It could make it harder, we will see. So first things first, the bottles in this one are a very slightly different style to the bottles in this one. There is not a lot in it, but because I did get them from different places, there is a slight different style to them. So in that case, while I am gonna share the diamonds between the two, or use these diamonds that are left over, I am not going to keep them in the same bottles because it will just mix up the cases and that will just cause me headaches later on that I do not need. Now, for those that haven't seen me sort of kit up and kit down this style of painting in the past, um, I will only ever kit up and kit down at the same time when a painting is bought from the same seller at the same time. Okay, so the only reason I am letting these diamonds intermingle, should we say, is because I bought all of these comparison paintings from Home Fun all on the same order shipment. So there's not gonna be that risk of any sort of slightly different dye lots. So we're going to use my little mini Xyron sticker maker gifted to me by a wonderful subscriber and well used. It's not quite run out yet. It's getting closer, but I'm still on the first refill, which is amazing. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn my inventory sheet into a sticker. which means I've got my symbol and my numbers all together. Now, because I am switching cases, this will be a little bit easier. I will not be, like I did last time, I will not be sort of changing the letters, the numbers and stuff as I go. I'm gonna, in effect, just stick them all on. So I'm gonna stick on, I'm gonna cut them into little sections just so it's easier to manage. But I'm just cutting through the sticker paper, but not all the way through. So I'm not fighting with very, very small pieces of sticker. I'm dealing with bigger chunks, but I don't want them to be too big that they just start annoying me. <laughs> because they can do after a bit. So yeah, I will show the completed paintings all at once but that will be when they're all done. That's the reason I'm not showing you what's been completed in this video. So you'll have to stay tuned to see that. So we'll start with the first one. And they do put the 5200 as the number to start off with, which in my head I do as well. And that is because in DMC numbers, it's actually classed as B5200 and the letter goes before the numbers. And home forms seem to do the same thing. So I'm gonna stick all of these on first and then I'll have a look at which ones can be transferred over. I do also have three bottles from a previous, from the biggest painting that I do, that I did, um, that I did not use in the 50 by 50 by 60 painting, or was it 40 by 50? I forget, I forget. Um, 
So there's some colours that I did use in the first painting I did, which was the biggest, but I didn't use them in the second size painting, but they may be needed in the third or the fourth one that I've still to do. My daughter has done the tiny one. And in fact, I have the diamonds here for that as well. So I'm going to pull them into it. And between it all, it means that I'm not de-kitting colours that I'm going to have to de-kit again and put into my spare storage later. So you could say it gets a little bit complicated, but sometimes I like that. It varies things up a little bit. And each painting comes with enough diamonds for what you're doing. So you do not in any way have to do it the same way as me. It is not very often that I will de-kit and kit up a painting in the same sort of thing, basically mix and match them. It's normally two different processes. The only reason I say that I am doing them all at the same time this time is because they've come from the same seller in the same shipment. And they are in effect the same painting in different sizes. So the colours are extremely similar across the paintings, though they don't tend to have the same number. Sorry, not same number, same symbol, which is why I won't necessarily um, use the same stickers that I've used in the previous one. So for this one, 310 was a letter P. For this one, 310 is the letter I. So the symbols are different. So first things first is to get the sticker sheets on. And because I am actually transferring from one case to another, I think this is going to be slightly easier to do and to figure out. So I think the first thing I'll do, before I even look at what colours I may need in the next painting, I'm going to look at what colours I can transfer over in this painting. So I'll start here, 155 I can transfer over. So I am just going to tip it into the pot. I'll deal with the diamonds that came with the painting, which are here, in a separate stage. And I will take the label off because that will show me at a glance what I have and haven't used. So 158 is also here. Oh, the bottle's alive. So I'm just going to straight transfer them over. That has some trashy bits in the bottom. So I'm actually just going to tip them on my carpet because they get hoovered up. Just tip them onto my craft room rug. It's the quickest way to get rid of them. So that's that one. 208, nope. 209, nope. 210, yes. So we don't have all of the same colours. In fact, each painting has had a different amount. And this painting, considering it's the second size from the biggest, actually have the most colours. The biggest painting did not. So 310, I say the symbols are changing as well. So there is no way that I could have used the same. Had a few little trash bits in the bottom of that one as well. Which is not surprising because this is sort of the end of the diamonds from this painting. So 318, I'll transfer that over. A little bit of static involved in this. That's not trash, that's just static. Get those moved. That's a different symbol as well. That one's A and that one's D. Okay, 336, no, 413, yes. And this just means that I'm not de-kitting the likes of this 413 into my spare storage and then having to de-kit it again when I de-kit this one. I'm saving myself that little step by actually just combining them now. So 414 is also one. And I'm going in order through these, but I've already noticed that while this 414 I'm using across both, 
415, which is next on this painting, actually wasn't in this one, considering it had more colours. It's like when they compile them, you know, compile them or render them, that's probably the better word, when they render them on the computer, they don't always end up with the same colours in them between sizes, which is quite interesting. You would just expect that the bigger the picture, maybe the more colours, but nope, it's not the same at all. Okay, 518, no, 550, yes. So we've still got a few that we'll need to de-kit afterwards. But for now, we're just pinching the colours that we can use. So 792, and again, there's a colour that this painting has that this one didn't. Just to vary things up a little bit again. And all the symbols are different, pretty much so far, that I've paid attention to anyway. 796, no, 797, yes. Now I've got quite a few of that one left, and that very well may mean that this colour has actually been in all the paintings, and it's just, the spares have just rolled over, because <laughs> there's loads in that one. Okay, 798. And again with this one, 798 as well. I've got loads left over and I think they've just rolled from one to another. I'd have to watch the video back to know for sure. But that's my guess because they're very popular colours. I am glad that the symbol has gone back to being black on the symbol rather than white because I did find in this last one there was a couple of symbols that were hard to read but only in the 40 by 50. I didn't notice it in the bigger one, which was very weird, but it did happen. Okay, then we've got 809, nope, 813, no, 820. And that again is another one that I have a load of spares left. And that was probably the bulk um, colour that went on the painting, so it could very well have been on others. So 823, no, 824, no, 825, no, 826, no, 827 is a yes. I'll transfer that over. And if I get in the habit of taking the sticker off here, I won't end up pulling stickers off that I've only just put on bottles. 934, no, 939 is a yes though. I figured that would be. Very dark blue. It's a very blue painting, this one. So I think we're going to have a lot more bags of diamonds that are going to be left over on this next painting, especially when it comes to the likes of 939 and stuff, because that pot is pretty full already and I haven't even touched the diamonds ready for this painting. 995, no, 996, we'll transfer it over. So 996 is done. Then what have we got? 3041, yep. We'll have that. And normally I would have just replaced this sticker with this one. But because I'm switching cases, it's actually easier just to peel off. So 3371, no. 3727, no. 3747, 3756, 3766. So we skipped quite a few then. I'm not, even though these colours vary, can vary quite a bit between these paintings, I'm not noticing the image varying a lot between any of them. Okay, 3807, we have that one. A bit of static in these. So I just flick the pot, though I did have a couple that managed to escape. Ooh, lots of sticky residue on this one. 
think we might need a bit of a bit of goo gone when we're done. So strap yourself in. This is probably going to be a long one. I haven't even got to this bag yet. Um, and then three eight six five. Okay. So that case wise now I've transferred over everything that I need. Now, if you did watch my last video, you will know that I did stash up here, which I did remember, three other colours that were in my first painting, but not in my second. So 154 is one that is in this painting. So we'll add that one in. Say that was from the first painting that I did. And that can go in that case. 340, that's also one that was in this second painting, but not in, sorry, in this third painting, but not in the second. Get rid of the little trash bits in the bottom. So we'll get that off. And then 803, was that in this one? It was. Okay. So that's stage one. I have taken out of there any colours that I need in this one, which means I don't have to de-kit them into my spare storage. Now, I do still need to put those in, and I will do in a moment. But what I want to do first is, if I find, if I can find where I put them, I want the diamond paintings for the other one. So here we go. So this is for the one that I have yet to do, which is 25 by 20. So it's only small. It only has 17 colours in the next size down. But what I want to do is I just want to check whether any of these that I've got left, I can use for this before I de-kit. So looking on here, 209, I can use in my next one. What else have we got? 336, no. 518, no. 796, no. 809, no. 813, I can use those. 823, I can use those. 824, 825, 826. <laughs> um, 934, no. 995, 3371, 3727, 3747, 3756, and 3842. Okay, so none of those others I'll be able to use, but I will be able to use these. Now, because I know I am not going to need this case at all um, between now when I'm kitting this one up and when I need to kit this one up, only because I already have my projects on the go, I'm going to put these back where I put the others. So I'm going to put them up here on my shelf. Rather than keeping them in a case, I'm just going to put them on my shelf for the next time. So they're up there, out the way. That sheet, that diamond, lot of diamonds can go back for when it's time, when I finish this one. Of which, of course, I'm only just starting. So what I need to do now is de-kit these. Um, I also want to keep hold of this, so this is my bag for any spares or extras. I don't actually have any in it at the moment, it is empty, so I'm going to use that when I kit that one up, or the rest of that one up in a moment. But first, I'm going to get these out of here um, and get this case back on the shelf, and then when I do the next one, I'll pop the bottles back. Um, now, this is a square painting, so my de-kitting process is complicated again. Again, for those that have been with me for a while, um, know that I don't make things easy when I de-kit squares. And the reason for that is, is I am completing a cross-stitch, a Heaven and Earth Designs cross-stitch pattern I am completing a cross-stitch pattern on a blank canvas using my spares. 
So some of these colours may be able to be used in my heaven and earth designs um, and I tend to take those colours out and transfer them over before I put the rest away as normal. If you do want to know more about my heaven and earth designs, um, I do. if you go to my website, 4kids at 147.com um, and click on diamond painting videos there is a section on my heaven and earth designs and it's the key videos that sort of let you know what it is that I'm doing and in effect how you can do one if you want to but it's the key videos off YouTube I've filtered them down for you I do have a playlist on YouTube as well if you want to watch them all but I suggest you start with the links on my website to get the basics and then by all means watch them all but that'll bring you up to speed. So <clears throat> I have four cases like this that I use for my heaven and earth designs. Um, so any of these spares that will fit into here will go in here first. So 208, nope I don't use that one. 336, I do. So I've got a tub here for 336, so I'm going to transfer these because it's classed to me as a heaven and earth design number. Now, I may not need all of those for my heaven and earth design, but I basically put them all in one place for the sake of keeping them separate. Uh, so keeping them, you know, all in one position and then all my other spares go somewhere else. So 518 I don't need. And then I go up to 700. This case only goes up to 600. So I get the second one. This is 603 to 905. So let's have a look. 796. Yes, that's in my heaven and earth designs. So I'm going to tip it in. Now you will see they are two different shades. For the purposes of my heaven and earth design, that doesn't matter to me. Um, the reason being is I picked a pattern that will make allowances for that. And you will see more of my reasoning why and stuff behind that in those videos. Okay, 809, nope. 934, this one doesn't go that high. So the next case, 934. Yes, so 934 I do use in Heaven and Earth Designs, but this one is full. So just to bring another thing into the equation, I have a box of all the extras of the Heaven and Earth Design numbers. So 934, there. So there's my extra 934s because my tub is full. So we'll tip those in and I'll bob those back in here. Take the label off this one, fill a gap just because it looks prettier. And pop that, I'll pop it to the side in case I need it again. And we can pop that one back. Okay, 995, nope. That did used to be there, but I've actually used all I need of that colour. 3371, I'm sure I used that. Yes, yeah, there. 3371. You get to recognise the numbers, especially when I'm doing the heaven and earth designs. Now this, of course, part of de-kitting would not be a step for most people, unless you've decided to also join the heaven and earth designs using spare diamonds method. Okay, so that is that case full up to the numbers that I've got, or I've done it, sorry. I've just got one more case. Uh, so 3727, yep, that's another one. This already has a couple of shades of 3727. Let's just add another one, because why not? So I wouldn't recommend you use your spares for all heaven and earth designs, cross stitches that you can get, um, because the colour shading could make a difference, but the image that I've got, it doesn't. So 3747, 
that again there's a few different shades look that's got about three different layers in it um but that one is full so if i bring in my extras three seven sorry my memory card saved these are not quick videos people just so you know so i'm going to tip all of those in i know they are a completely different shade and that is something that can happen with diamonds if i ever needed this number for another diamond painting from another company i would pick the closest match but my heaven and earth signs as i say it actually doesn't matter so i mix them up three seven five six nope and last but not least three eight four two yes and again it's a full one so I'll pull in my box. Not all of these have baggies already, but most of them that are full do. So we'll tip that one in. Okay. Oh, that sticker gave me some jip as well. We'll get it off the best we can. Gugon will do the rest. Oh. Let's try putting that away. 3842. Try and make it in roughly the right place. Okay, so they can all go away. So that so now I have pulled out of here any diamond first off that I can use for this painting or the smaller one. I've then taken out any diamonds that I can use for my heaven and earth designs. Now we are on a standard de-kitting. So this is sort of the process I would take if I didn't have another Heaven and Earth Designs and I hadn't bought a painting from the same seller at the same time. This is just now going to be a whole lot shorter for me. Though having said that, I've just spent, what, half an hour doing the rest. Anyway. <laughs> so I have spares boxes. I have three of them. These are the 100 to 600s. So I've got to start off with 208. And this has cards for every single DMC number. Um, now, what I do also have um, are some very nice, new, new to me, grip seal bags that were bought for me by Diana and they are extremely thick and strong like they are really really nice and sturdy and I do slowly but surely want to move my diamonds over to these bags so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over just the numbers that I'm putting away today I'm not doing them all but these bags should stand up on their own. I won't need the piece of paper insert because they're that thick. I can't see them collapsing in on themselves. They just are beautiful, beautiful bags. Um, so I am going to start the moving over process. This is the first de-kitting that I've done it with. I could sit there and move over everything but I think that could be quite frightening. Um, my stickers aren't going to peel up and move over though, so I do need to create a new sticker. So for that, I'm going to get hold of my pen and I'm actually going to use all the same stickers. So I'm going to use this new roll of stickers that I got from um gbfke i think um but i do have a link to these as well on my website again i have a favorites page or our favorites which is quite new and it is a link to all our favorite things and there is actually a links or one of the the options is all the stuff I used in the spare storage. I link to all of that as well. So I'm going to change that over. 
So there we go, we've got 208 in squares in a nice new baggie popped away and bit by bit my bag should change over. We're going to see how it goes. I may end up doing an evening where I sit and do them all, but we'll see. Right, I do just need to phone my hubby back because he's just rang me. I'll be right back with you. Okay, I'm back. Um, sorry. So, yeah, I may end up doing this sort of revamp and change of bags all at once. But for now, I'm just going to do it as I go along. Um, so, in effect, because I have not done this before, i.e. I've not started to move any bags over, I can actually write my labels for all of these. So I label them up according to, of course, the DMC number, which is what I'm writing on now. But then um, I write on a square label or a rectangle label when they are square diamonds. And I write on a round label like that when they're round diamonds. But I'm going to move them all over into these nice ones that stand up all on their own. So I don't need a piece of paper. And I'm going to go from there. So 518 was my next one. So I'm going to have a look. I do have it in both, but of course I'm going to pinch the square ones. And I'm going to transfer them over. Now this isn't something that you will, of course, always need to do. But I was gifted a thousand of these baggies by Diana, which will be enough to transfer everything over. Um, I'm not transferring over the ones from the Heaven and Earth Design spare storage, not at the moment. But I will transfer them over when I'm finished with that colour and they go into my normal spares. And I'll probably just keep doing it as I'm de-kitting for a while. So I will just move them all over, like now. I'll just move the numbers over that I'm actually doing. When it gets to the point that I have done, you know, most of them, that's when I'll possibly go through and finish up the others. Okay, so that's all the numbers I had up to 600. So let me get my second box, which has my 700s to my 900s. So we've got 809. Do I have any in here already? I do. And in fact, there's not many left in there. There's less than 10. But anyway, they're all going to get moved over. So I'll transfer these ones first. And I will sort out peeling these labels off these at some point. They're just not peeling off for me to be able to reuse them. So I will I will fight with them all properly later. Because this video is going to be long enough with me just doing the switches that I'm doing. You really do not need to watch me do all the rest. Because there is only so much. That can be taken. We do have a couple of rogue ones in there as well, probably from the last, whichever was the last one that I did, but that's fine. Um, I'm also not going to do the round ones at the same time at the moment. Um, I may potentially change that up in the future, but I don't want to start getting labels mixed up between round and square. Could get dangerous. So 995, get another very nice baggy. It's not as bad while I've only got a few of these to do as well. It's a little bit nicer. Put those in. Now, these, I say, these are thicker and they are slightly thinner to my previous ones. So I may not be able to hold quite as many diamonds in them as I could in these bags. See, there's like a quarter of an inch in it. Um, but that's fine by me. 
because as I say they're just they're nicer and I use this spare storage all the time I'm forever in and out of it so it will be nice to have that quality there as well so we'll get those and then that's that box done because that's up to the 900s so I've just got one more to put away and that is three seven five six. Oh, that's this one now this one I have loads of bags of it because I did an ever moment so what I'm actually going to do is I think I'm just going to start a new bag for these and I'm not going to fight with those now because I think I have enough on my plate today um, I will sort out what's happening with those other bags at a later date. What I did also think that I may do, and I'm not sure on this because the Heaven and Earth designs, if I decided to do yet another one with spares, could make a difference, is part of me doesn't know whether to just have one bag of diamonds per colour. And after that, you know, they maybe get stored in, you know, these cheaper baggies that I've still got. Um, and they, you know, become for getting rid of in some form or other. So whether it be, you know, having a box to use them for, um, you know, different projects, little arts and crafty projects, or, you know, there are sites where people can say if they're short of some diamonds, if they need some of a particular colour. And maybe keeping my spares box to a certain limit. But I'm not sure how it's going to work, especially when I'm de-kitting. If I come up to a bag that's already full, what do I then do with those diamonds? So I'm still thinking the process through. But I think that could potentially stop my diamonds getting too out of control. Um, but still allowing me to have spare diamonds, should it ever be that I run out on a painting, I will not be in a panic that I don't have any. But that's one for the four bangs. And that may make me go through and basically make a bag for every single DMC colour. Um one for round, one for square, and then I'll do that as, as a complete process. Let me know your thoughts, actually, in the comments below. If you think that sort of having a limit on the amount of spares is a good or a bad thing, and it may be something that I'll do as a little whip and chat sort of project, maybe, or at least I'll do a section of it, maybe, in a whip and chat, because I think it could be a long process. Anyway... This case has now been emptied of all diamonds, even though they are in two, two or three different places. So some have gone into the spare storage. Hang on, I can never open this unless my arms aren't lifted up. <laughs> uh, so some are put away for the, the smaller one of these. Some are in here, some are away in either Heaven and Earth Designs or just my spares. So I'm now just going to put some Goo Gone on a cloth and I'm just going to clean up any of these bottles that have um, sticker remnants. I have found as I go along, I do have less and less bottles with sticker remnants. And it could be that the ones that come off easy are the ones that I've used Goo Gone on before. I haven't paid close enough attention to be sure. But it definitely seems to, as though that the sticker maker paper, which is a permanent paper, is a permanent sticker sheet, does come off easier than, to some than others. And then I'm just using the dry part of the cloth to wipe any remnants off. And that is that case for now done with. This will go back onto my shelf and of course I'll pop those spare bottles back in it when it's done when I kit up the next one. 
Okay, so back to kitting up, which is what we were all here for in the first place, sort of. Depends on which part of the video you looked at. So I like to use these little A6 bags to hold any extras. Um, if I only tend to have one colour, then I may put it in one of these pots. Um, but I do tend to find I, I often have quite a bit that's left over from the likes of these paintings. So I do put those into, well, I have put those into baggies with the number on the front. And then when it comes to filling them up, I tip them in. So I am keeping hold of these numbers. Let's put them in order to help me. Um, from the last one, knowing full well that I could quite possibly reuse them for this one. And then I just have a copy of the picture that I cut off the inventory sheet. I just keep using the same one because it's the same picture. Uh, it just reminds me what the spares are for, which can make my life easier. And then we have the diamonds that came with this painting. So these are the ones we're actually supposed to use. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a little breather to sort of tidy up this stuff that's to the side of me and um, get my bin ready. Um, you will not see much, of course, time difference um, because I'll pause it. But look, I've got quite a few of those. Um, but yeah, we'll get this one kitted up and then I'm going to get the canvas ready and I'm going to do it in the same style I did the last one, which you'll see in a bit. Okay, I'm back. So, um, I've gathered all my supplies. I've got my little bin that I like to use. Um, unfortunately, this company's gone out of business since. Um, but if I ever get hold of or locate or know of a suitable alternative, I'll be sure to let you know. Um, what I've also done is I have pulled out the four colours that are named on these bags that came from the last kit. The reason being is I just think it's easier to sort of get those done and out the way. And then if I need any bags for any others, I know that I'll need a new one. So first up is 310. Now we will see how many bags that we can get in to these. I tend to like to cut them up in twos if I can. The tray is here to sort of catch anything like that when I open the baggies funny. I have tried just sort of emptying them all into the tray and then going to put them in the pots but I just find it doesn't work as well for me. Um, I end up with too many diamonds sort of in the tray and I just end up making a mess. It works when I'm putting any extras into a baggie but it doesn't work otherwise. I keep making sure that I'm getting rid of any rubbish. And this one doesn't seem to have as much 310 as some of the others have had. That's always a nice little bonus. Though I am making a bit of a pig's ear at getting them to go in the tub. And we've got one more bag, so let's see how many we can get in. We've got a baggie all made up for it, so I don't need to sort of make them go in if they won't. Is it going to do it? Oh, they are. So they have all fit in there. Find my top. So what I'm going to do with that bag is I'm just going to pop it away in sort of the baggie that holds any extras because I'll basically do the same thing for the next painting and pull any out. Now 939, I know we are definitely going to have some over because we have some of these very big bags which are equal to five of the smaller bags. So let me see how many of these I can get in. Okay, so that is pretty full. So I'm going to put the top on, but I'm going to keep it out just in case I need that extra reference of what number it is. And then for these thicker bags, or these big bags that Hong Fung can sometimes send for some numbers, I prefer to tip the diamond straight into the baggie. I just find it easier to handle in that way. 
but with the smaller baggies it's different. So with the big bags, because they're equivalent to five of the small bags, you start tipping those into the tray and you have that sort of too many diamonds to deal with situation. Whereas with the small bags, it is just easier to tip them into this tray. There's quite a few trashy bits in there. And then use the tray to tip them into the bag. And hopefully, therefore, there's not too many of them for them to tip out and go all over the place. And you sort of can't tip them into these baggies sort of two at a time. Well, you could, but not easily. Okay, so we'll seal up the top of that one and they can go away in there and that can now go back. Seven, nine, eight. So this is one again that we've already transferred over. A huge amount of diamonds. So we are likely to have more over than we would in a normal instance. But the only reason the 310 is so low is the first painting, I actually was short one diamond for 310. And I have heard a few people say they have been short often or a few times with Honfon. I've not experienced that myself. I was shorted a bag on inventory once, but I actually didn't even need it for the painting. Um, but I have heard some people say that there has been occasions that it's been short. And that will be why I keep my spares. So yeah, do let me know in the comments down below if you think having sort of one bag of spares is enough. Um, I like my, my system in the fact that I can have more than one bag. I don't know if it's just that one particular colour that we've just put away that drives me up the wall because I do have like six or seven bags of it. Um, I know I have a lot of 310 as well. But for the purposes of my Heaven and Earth design painting, I am using, you know, more than one bag's worth of spares. I suppose the question is whether I would do another one after that. Because I am currently doing two Heaven and Earth design paintings using my spares. I really don't know whether I need a third. <laughs> um, or maybe I just need to come up with something else. I'm not sure. Okay, 8.20. So this is the last one that I've already got a pre-written bag for. And this has probably been the most popular colour in all of the paintings that I've done so far. This has probably been the one colour that I've sort of received the most bags of um, because it's very much used in the in the top of the night sky. And I've got one bag that I don't think I've got it right. No, it's got the tiniest, tiniest hole in it. So the diamonds are coming out like one at a time. Let's, let's just cut it properly. There we go. That's easier, isn't it? might get one more in this and then I am dealing with what will go in the baggie. Yeah. So I'm happy with how full that is. So let's get some of the rest into the tray. I'm going to open a couple of bags or two or two to four, probably four bags and then I'll tip them into that the grip seal bag that I've got. I'm not being too fussy on how I cut it. I'm just letting the diamonds fall into the tray. And we'll pop in 820s in there. This is actually the bag that I labelled up with a Sharpie on the wrong side as well. When I first did it, I wrote 820 on that side and I should have written it on the white side. Hey ho, it all works out. Of course, I'm trying not to cut through any diamonds, which is why you'll see my scissors open and close while the diamonds decide where it is they're going. If they're going to move out the way of the scissors. But I do have plenty of these. So I'm not going to run out because there's been a transfer of loads of them from before. Uh, 
those in. So that's another four bags emptied, so I'm going to tip those in because I don't want them falling over the end of the tray. Because that is a that is an amount of diamonds, a party, that I do not want to pick them all up. Average of 200 per bag, 800 diamonds, picking them all up. Hmm, yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. So, last three bags. All emptied. And that's 820 done. So, that's probably the main single colour that is used in that painting. Okay, so we've got no extra bag things to deal with. We are purely now dealing with these and what these bring. So we've got 996 if I actually hold them up the right way. So we'll get those in. Not sure if I've got that one straight either. Or if I've kept, oh no, I did. Little bit of static. Pick up those extra ones after. Ooh. One decided to flick everywhere, and then we'll pop in the stragglers. And that's that colour done. Okay, what have we got next? 210. So this was one again that we already started with. So it may or may, may not make a difference as to how many fit in the little pot. But it is only four bags, so we should be fine. Because I think it's six or seven bags that these pots hold on, on average. Again, it can depend on what company. Some company put, manage to squeeze more diamonds into their bags than others. You know, when they come in strips like this. I've even found it differs between colours in one company. But even with the ones we've had, we're fine. Okay, what's next? Oh, 517. Only one lonely little bag. So we pop that in. Hopefully, this will get easier as we go along. So, 3807. It is a smaller painting, so we're not dealing with quite as many bags as I have done on previous ones. And it will be even less on the next one that I do because that one is a lot smaller. So 3807, 318. Can't see it for looking. And this grey tends to only really be around things for shading. So it's tended to be around where the moon is on this painting and around where the couple are stood. Just gives that little bit of shading. Same with this one, 414. It tends to appear in with, you know, the couple that are of course normally in either 310, which is black, or 939, which is a really dark blue. And then there's the odd bit all around the edges of it that seem to help it fit into the background and not be such a harsh, harsh line between one and the other. That is one thing that I have enjoyed with these paintings and the way they've been done is that those little bits of detail where you know it's bringing the shading in together. Definitely a bit fun. But for the past for the past few days I have been working on a round diamond painting while I've been waiting to kit this one up. So it'll be quite nice to go back to doing squares. I do 
do like both rounds and squares. I know some people have preferences for one over another, but I used to say I preferred squares to rounds, but to be honest, as time's gone on, I, I think there is there's elements to both that I really like. I don't think I have, I don't think it is a definite firm favourite because even after spending quite a bit of time doing a square, I then really enjoy doing a round and vice versa. Um, I know a lot of the paintings that I have ordered for comparisons recently have been squares, but that is mainly because I do have a lot of rounds still to do. So it helps me keep that variety because a lot of the ones that I've got from Fancells and, and other similar companies have been rounds. Um, I tend to buy the squares so that I can keep my, you know, my mix between the two quite nice. Having said that, I do have quite a few 30 by 40s in square that I also want to do. So maybe next time I sort of do a project to kit up, I might kit up one of one of the squares from one of the other companies that I've been sent. Um, and of course, I've got my minions on the go that's round. So I can still get a variety. It will just be more heavily on squares and I can get some of those done and see what the quality is like next to home funds. Right, I do need to change the battery in my camera again because it's flashing at me, which completely shows me how much I've been waffling to you all. Try and sneak in that extra little bag of diamonds. It doesn't tell me when it's getting low. It just starts flashing at me when I'm filming. It won't tell me, so... I'll get that changed and I'll be back with you. Okay, battery all changed. What's bad is I changed this battery, of course, at the beginning of sort of this video. And while I've had a couple of pauses for other stuff, like when Hobby ran, um, the first battery that I took out the camera went straight into the charger. Every time the battery sort of flashes at me, I'll put it straight on to charge because there's nothing worse than trying to get something filmed and not having a battery. Um, that first battery is still charging, it's not fully charged and the second one's run out. So if this one runs out, could be entertaining. Um, okay, so we've now, I've gone for sort of getting rid of some of these bags that I have a lot of. And I think we may have to create another sort of grip seal bag for this one because we already have a lot transferred over from the last painting or two. Could have transferred over from one of them, could have transferred over from both of them. Um, I can't quite remember which numbers have transferred over from which. But we'll see how many... That's probably looking comfortable for. So we'll pop those into there. Ooh. Diamonds flying everywhere. Okay, there we go. And then we'll get these into the tray. Ooh. So I'm just sort of cutting through any which way. These are very, very full, these bags. They don't seem to want to let me move diamonds out of my way. So I'm just sort of cutting through the pack, but allowing the diamonds to move. And if not, I am moving my scissors back so that they've got somewhere. They can go where I've already cut and then I can get to cut through. So I'm not actually going hard enough to cut through a diamond. Though you can cut through a diamond with a pair of scissors. I have been known to do it before. And then I'm just using these bags that I've got from Evermoment. Uh, they have little white, white sides to sort of just write the number on so that you can see it when the diamonds are in the bag. I don't tend to use these for my spare storage or anything. Um, so if I use these now, 
they don't end up sitting in a drawer not getting used and yeah I don't end up with wasting more stickers by stickering up a bag for putting extras in and I don't have to deal with baggies um, with these bags once this painting's kitted up. I can't remember who was who it was that advised, that mentioned that they did it. I do apologise. I should sort of take note of these things more, but I have so many things noted down um, that I would probably forget where I noted it down. But it was somebody did sort of mention in the comments, I think, and recommended and, and said that they put their diamonds, they cut open all these bags when they kit up and they put them into grip seal bags. Whereas I used to just keep going until this was full and then I'd put all those spare bags in there and I'd cut them open when I'm actually doing the painting. And I must say, putting them into the grip seal bags is a lot easier. It is, a, I find it's a lot quicker when I need to fill them up, when I'm in the middle of the diamond painting. It saves me, it can save me quite a bit of time and it saves me having all that rubbish, of course, about. Now, I have just tipped a few out of the top of here just because I don't see the point in having it crammed full when I've already got a spare bag. And it means um, that when I go to tip them from the pot into my diamond painting tray, if I actually only needed a few, I don't have loads spilling out. So I need one more of these, just make sure I'm writing on the right side. I'm trying my best, 799. And that's why I don't put the pot away until I'm done, because I've thrown all the rubbish away and I've forgotten what number this was. And I'm not pausing the video to go back and figure out which number it is. So that's why I keep the pot out until I'm completely done. And that can go away. We've got anything else that we've got a lot of? Okay, we've got four of each of these. So let's see how these go. I can't see these being a particular problem. But we'll do the ones with the most. Now that I've got few enough colours to actually be able to see how many baggies I've pretty much got of each one. Try not to spread them all over my desk. But at least it's a white desk. So I can find them later. Oh, I'll find them in a moment and get them into this pot. Oh, they're attaching to me and everything. How much did I want that one up? Get in there. There we go. Then we've got eight, two, seven. And I couldn't find that one to lock in then. We'll easily get these four bags in as well. There's good. Oh, I squeezed the bag a bit too hard and half the diamonds came out. But that's what my big tray is for. That's the only thing I think that I wasn't able to link on the um, page where I've got our favourites linked is where I got my big trays from because the company that I got them from no longer sells them. It was just a company on AliExpress, but the exact place that I purchased from that I can, you know, recommend in the fact that, you know, there was no customer service issues, there was no delivery issues. For me personally, I didn't have any of those issues, means I'm happy to link them. Um, I understand that every company can be different for every person um, and I appreciate that. But if I've had a really bad experience with a company, I do not want to link to their products if that's the case. Um, and while this company was fantastic, they no longer sell the item. So I don't want to just find a similar item and link to it and the company turn out to be awful because that would not make me a happy bunny. So I think this was, I think this was the only thing that you know is our sort of 
favourites and these are partly our ongoing favourites. They're the things that me and Megan use all the time. Um, that I couldn't link to. The storage wise, so I do have links to like all the different size cases. The 60, the 90, sorry not, not the 90. <laughs> the 30, the 42, the 60, the 15 and the 7. Um, I have sort of linked to all of them but there are some that I have got from um, various sellers. So for example I do have two of the 42 bottle cases. They were both bought from different sellers. I've sort of linked to one for each variety um, trying to spread out who I've got them from. So some of them were also um, a link to Amazon. They're not affiliate links or anything, um, but they do link to Amazon, even though you may find them cheaper on AliExpress. But that's because the main company I got my 60 standard bottles from, they don't sell the cases anymore. But when I got a 60 bottle case from Amazon, that one, that link's still valid. Um, so if you, you know, aren't liking the pricing on my link, do please shop around. But at least that link will allow you to get all the information that you may need. Um, but they are all places that I have purchased various storage items from. Um, of which there are many. As many of you may know, I like my storage. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I made a mock of that. Let's get that one in the tray. And then last, but by no means least, we've got 3041. Transfer those over. Okay, so that is all the diamonds in that I actually got given with this painting. So they're done. Baggies are done. I then have a little A6 bag that I do use to sort of hold diamonds both um, for bigger paintings that have some left over. I also do use these to hold some paintings that I haven't yet done, normally about 30 by 40 size, that don't come in these individual packets because they just take up far more room. So that is the next one kitted up. What I need to do now, oh, I have got one road diamond, I'm not pairing that up, is I do need to prepare my canvas. Now, I'm gonna play the same game I played last time. So what I did last time was I divided it up into sections, numbered the sections, and then pulled the numbers out of like this little pot. Um, now, of course, there's one number left in there, but that is because it was the last number that I did. So number seven was the last one I did. There was no point in taking it out because I knew which one it was. Um, what I did find was, considering I think I've divided it up into five this way, is I actually ended up doing, like, out of the amount of squares that were here, I only had about three squares left, and I hadn't even touched this side of the painting, um, just due to the way the sort of lucky dip worked. I know I was, I was telling my mom and she said how she'd done a painting where like the whole top row was complete and she'd done loads down here and she'd not touched the top row. Um, but sometimes I can find that is part of the fun. Um, Megan is currently doing one that I think she's divided up into about 74, though her squares are a lot smaller than mine. She does like, she doesn't have as much time to diamond paint as I do. Um, so she does prefer to do smaller squares, which means she has more of them. And her painting's bigger. But I think I'm going to divide this up. I think I'm still going to try and stick with the rough size sections that I like to work on. Um, oh, I've just got a knock that my tea's ready. 
Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to still sort of divide the way I like to or the size I like to work on. I was thinking of going for smaller and then doing multiples in an evening. But then I'm still getting the numbers out of the pot and putting them back, aren't I? Um, so while I may occasionally do more than one square in an evening, um, I tend to know that I'll at least get that one square done. Anyway, I'm going to go have my tea and I'm going to think about it. Um, but of course, for you guys, it will still be in this video. Um, I will get this canvas prepped in this video. Um, I might even get some of this tape from around the sides taken off as well. Because that's quite thick. It's quite a lot of tape there. Um, yeah, I'll have a think about it while having my tea. And then we'll get it done. Okay, so I've had my tea. Thank you for being patient while I have my tea. Um, I'm still going to do this, I think, into sort of sizes that are nice for me to manage. Um, just because I would rather just, as, as much fun as it is, um, pulling out each, you know, each card and section, I don't want to be pulling out absolutely loads of them. And that is so not straight, that one. Um, I don't want to be pulling out loads of them each evening and having to sort of redo. Oh, there we go. Just checking it has cut through. Um, yeah, and, and while I may do multiple, I want to feel as though the section is a decent size. So I am actually going to do them about this size, so they're a little bit longer and skinnier. And then I think I want to go for halfway. It may end up still being 20 to be honest, but I still feel as though that is a nice size section. So if I take off just one of them so that you can actually see, because of course you can't see where I've cut. So that would be one size section for me um, that does have a little river down it but that's fine because that just flattens out it didn't have them when I when I got the painting now Megan did get a sharpie to sort of dry on this cover paper however it sort of because this is a waxy coating it sort of bubbled up um, I am just going to try my permanent marker because I can't remember if I tried that last time. Now, see, it just bubbles up. Um, and while it doesn't go, um, if you let it dry, it will stay there. But it just comes off too easy. I'm just going to have to use stickers. I was trying to avoid using, you know, too many stickers, but I'm just going to have to do it. So... Two, three, how many have I got? Four, eight, twelve, sixteen. So I've just got sixteen this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now these stickers can pop off as well. That is the only thing that I've found. Let me just get my little little bit with loads and loads of different type stickers in it see if I can use some of these up so that I've just got my roll um, 13 14 15 16 17 18 probably should have used those up first but anyway it'll be fine there'll be more times um, so yeah if you are working on a big painting where you may need to sort of roll the picture up do bear in mind they can pop off. So we originally did Megan's with stickers on the same way that I'm doing this but because it's large as she's moving it in and out of sort of this craft room where it lives when she's not doing it and the conservatory where she tends to do it with me because it's moving between one and the other 
we were finding that she was losing Snickers. So that's the only thing to bear in mind. Um, I've not found anything, or at least I don't think I've got anything that will write on this and make it extremely clear yet. Okay, so if we've got up to 16 on here, I need to take out, in fact, I can start folding them up. So I'm just reusing the pieces of paper that I created last time, but I need to make sure that I take out the higher numbers that I don't need. Oops, that's eight. And I do give it a good shuffle. That's 16. Okay, so 18, I don't need. So I'll keep that out. That's number nine. It's a good job I did underline it. 17, I don't need. I'm trying to find which way I folded them in the first instance <laughs> so that I can fold them back because I use quite thick paper. Number one. Number five. Number four, 20. And we've got 10, 15, don't need 19, 14, and 13. Okay, so I should still have 16 pieces of paper. I'm pretty sure I've not lost any. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay with the one that I forgot to pick up. So I do have enough pieces. I use this little A6 bag just to put those back in so that I can reuse. Um, that just sits in my little rolling cart. Um, I am just gonna do the tape as and when I come up to it on this one. I was gonna do it all in one strip, but then I forgot and I cut across this paper. So I'm just gonna peel off any excess double-sided tape as and when I get to it. Um, and what I'll do is I, I tend to, so if it's down here, for example, I tend to um, lay all the diamonds in this little section row and then I trim the tape off afterwards and I use the diamonds as a square edge. So my random, now there's been a few names for this one that people have suggested. So there's been random, number, there's been people saying use advent style but ditch calendar. There's been Bingo, um, Lucky Dip, I quite like Lucky Dip, um, and there's been a few other suggestions um, at the time that I'm filming this video. So since the the um, my diamond painting space went up and me actually filming this video, there has been quite a few suggestions. So I'm still sort of mulling them all over. Um, because that did only go up, as I'm kitting this up, that only went up a couple of days ago. So I will let you know, but I think we're definitely going to do this style for June. So I'm going to do another sort of whip and chat for June. Um, it will be divided up into 30, so they will be smaller sections, but I will be chatting to you through it. So I definitely prefer smaller sections when it comes to doing a whip and chat a day for a month. Um, <coughs> so I'll, I'll have definitely thought of a name by then um, it won't be any particular diamond painting that we'll be doing in June we're just going to do one from our stash okay so um, no pressure you know there's no need to purchase a particular one there's no theme at all and I will of course do my preparation video for it a couple of weeks before so that you know that it's coming but I think we're definitely going to have fun with this sort of style. And the fact that everybody will be doing different paintings will also be nice in this style because we will all pick out different numbers. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this process in the meantime. So I'm going to go and get these items popped into my little cart. And then I've got my diamonds and my painting ready to start but thank you so much for joining me and for watching and I will speak to you all again soon.